I'm Shen Temple. I'm with Salt Spring Fire. Welcome to our Zoom session today. We're going to be talking about something called mechanical advances, and that's a physics science. Uh, and we're going to build mechanical advances. So I'm going to show you some of the pieces that we're going to use and how we're going to build the system. There's a few key rules we're going to follow to figure out what kind of mechanical advantage we have. So when I'm using mechanical advantage, I ask, three questions um, and I'm going to figure out to figure out what my ratio is. So the first question I'm going to ask is where's my knot? I'll get a little more into that later. The second question I ask is where is my last pulley? And the last one I'm going to ask is how many ropes do I have um, going between the anchor and the load? So the first piece of equipment I'm going to introduce you to is actually my assistant, the other. And he's going to be writing down our ratio on this board. I'm going to be using this fancy little luggage scale, which is going to tell me digitally what our weight of pull is. Um, and we're going to be using these devices called carabiners, as well as some pulleys. So this is a pulley. Um, it opens like that. It has this wheel in the middle that turns. That's where the rope is going to go. And we're going to build some mechanical advantage using those pieces. So starting here, we have some weight. So this is 100 pounds of weight. I know because these are, this is two 50 pound um, weight. So I'm gonna just try and lift it. Ready, Ready set, roll, there we go. 100 pounds, okay. So that is essentially a one-to-one. -one. That would be if I were to just lift it with a rope attached. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tie a knot. The knot I'm gonna tie is called a figure eight on a bite. I'm gonna make a bite in my rope, which is where I hold the rope back on itself. And then I'm gonna tie a figure eight. I'm gonna make a figure eight, I'm gonna make another bite going down. And this uh, loop part of it is gonna go around itself all the way around and back through the top. So I get this H-shaped loop. And then I'm going to dress it, make it look pretty. Pick up the twists and the inks. And I'll throw a safety knot in it. So there's my knot. So this is one of the first things I'm looking for to figure out what kind of mechanical advantage I have is where's my knot. So I'm going to take a carabiner, clip it onto my weight. If I put this rope on my load, so my knot is at my load, that's going to tell me that I have a odd number of mechanical advantage. The way that I remember that is odd equals load, which is also one syllable, which is also an odd number. Even equals anchor, and that's two syllables, which is an even number. So it's a really cool way to remember what's what. So not is at my load, that means it's going to be odd. I have no mechanical advantage at lifting this rope. I'm still lifting the same 100 pounds. There we go. Okay. I'm going to start making this a bit. So hey, I'm going to write down 100 for our one to one. One hundred pounds is one to one. So now, if I add a pulley, see what happens here. I'm going to put this rope around my pulley, and I'm going to hook up my pulley up here. So my rules, my knot is at my load odd system, my last pulley, that was my second rule, where's my last pulley? So if my last pulley is up at my anchor, it's actually not giving me any benefit. It's not giving me any mechanical advantage. It's what we call the change of direction. So this, my last pulley is at my anchor. That's exactly what this one, this one is just a change of direction. And I pull on this, I'm still pulling the same 100 pounds. So 100 pounds, this is a change of direction. I have one rope. How many ropes do I have? 
not including that change of direction pulley, so I have one rope, still a one-to-one. -one. Now let's start making this easier for me. I'm gonna build a two-to-one. So to build a two-to-one, first thing I have to ask is where's my knot? My knot is gonna be at my anchor because it's an even system, so let's switch that around. I'll put my knot up here. So my first rule, knot is at the anchor. My last pulley is at the load now, so this pulley is going to help me. It is going to give me an mechanical advantage. And then how many ropes do I have? I have two. So this is going to be a two to one mechanical advantage. So I'm going to tie a knot here. It's called a butterfly knot. I'm going to show you how, it, how it's made and then I'll make it up nice and close. So make a butterfly knot. I make what I call, what they call a DNA helix. I make a loop and a loop and now I have this funky DNA helix. And now I'm going to take the top part of this and go down through the bottom and through the center helix coming right back at you. So I'm going to go down and around and through and pull. And that is called a butterfly knot. So that's the type of knot I'm going to be using just to tie my, my little luggage scale on so I have a way to pull and see how much weight I'm getting or how much mechanical advance I'm doing. I'm going to build that little knot right here. The butterfly. And on my luggage scale. Turn it on. Yeah. Here and hold. We have 50, 55 pounds. So 55 pounds, that's my two to one. Now it's almost only half the weight. That's my two to one. The count fell down in my 100 pounds is now only 55 pounds. And that was way easier than lifting that 100 pounds. I'm not even grunting and groaning anymore. So that is a two to one. Now let's bring it up a notch and let's see if we can make a three to one. Up. Take my butterfly knot out. So my first rule in order to have a three to one, that's an odd number. For an odd number, my knot needs to go back to my low. So we're gonna put the knot. That's a load. And I'm going to go up and down. And I need to go through another pulley. Let's put this in here as well. So, my first rule where's my knot? Is that my load? I know it's mod system. Where's my last pulley? My last pulley is also at the load, so it's adding mechanical advantage for me. And how many lines do I have? One, two, three. This is my three to one mechanical advantage. I'm gonna try my little butterfly here again, so I can weigh it. And lift. Whoa. We have 34 pounds, about a third of 100. So that's our three to one mechanical advantage. So now we're three to one, 34 pounds, about a third of 100. So it's getting easier and easier. So after three comes four. Four again is an even system. That means I need to move my knot back up to my anchor. Put 
not back up at the anchor. Two pulleys. Two pulleys. I'm going to make four. So, my first rule, not if I'm anchor, so I know I'm creating an even system. I'm going to need more lines. I'm going to need another pulley. I'm going to put another pulley in there. And my last pulley is at my low, which is part of the mechanical band, but now I have a four one. I tie a knot in here. My butterfly. And this. And I have 23 pounds. Pretty close. 100 pounds. Four to one. It's going to be 23. That's my four to one mechanical advantage. And the last one we're going to build is a five to one, which now that's going to be an odd system again, which means my not need to go back down towards my load for that odd Two pounds for our five to one mechanical advantage. 
but actually only give us a little more benefit than our four to one because we're adding more and more friction. Um, friction is not our friend we're trying to make it easier. Friction is gonna make it a little bit harder. So my rules, if my knot is at my load, it's odd. If my last pulley is at my load, I get counted as part of my mechanical advantage. And then I count how many ropes do I have. In this case, I have five. That's how we build a one to one, two to one, three to one, four to one, five to one. What kind of numbers did we get in their shadow? So we started with 100 pounds, and when we went to a two to one, we were able to cut the load almost in half to 55 pounds. It made it a lot easier. I could tell it was easier. Um, and then when we went to a three to one, we went down to 34 pounds. It was pretty close to a third. And then our four to one, we had 23 pounds. Um, you know, it should probably be close to 25 pounds, but it's a it's just a leg of steel, so there may be some, some error in that as well. And then our five to one, we're looking for probably expect to see about 20 pounds of load, and we hit 22 pounds. So that was our fun experiment on how to create a capital advantage through all the systems, through all the parts. And we did all of that with just a couple pair of beaners and four pulleys. We were able to create all that mechanical advantage to make things easier. Anybody have any questions? Do you want to show how high the weight goes if you lift it up to your head at the five and the one? Sure. Uh, in order to lift it, I'm going to another redirect. So I'm not adding any mechanical damage, I'm just going to redirect it. So I fill out a five to one with a redirect. There's my 100 pounds with, you hold that with two fingers, strong, 100 pounds. Let's see how slowly it's going up when you lift it. Oh yeah, good point, David. So the other thing about mechanical bends, we talked about what we benefit. We benefit every time we add more mechanical advantages, we make it easier because there's less weight, but I have to move more rope. So when I move this rope to so here's the foot, and I move this one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, five feet, my weight has moved but one foot. So that's the, the cost of making it easier, there's less weight, but it's gonna take me five times more rope, five times longer to move that same weight. And that's gonna be the same with all of them. So how about I build the system back down and we'll show that through all the systems. So I'm gonna downgrade it back to a four to one. This will be a way Holding around. I rule about where my knot is. I do this. Flip it up here. And we flip this. We put this back down. That's another way that I can switch it from that five one to a four. Here. So this ends up being a four to one with a, with a redirect. So this is about one of these that I don't have that. Okay, I do want the redirect. So now I have my knot is at my anchor. It's an even system. I'm back to that four to one. So when I pull one foot, one, two, And by and 
helpful in firefighting? When is this helpful in firefighting? That's a great question. So we use mechanical advantage with um, rope rescue calls. So if we have somebody um, has a car crash and their car is over on the ditch somewhere, we need to get to them safely. We'll use ropes to help get them out safely. We'll attach the ropes to what's called a basket stretcher, kind of like a bed that ropes can attach to so we can lift people to a safe place and we can look after them if they've fallen down or up or whatever. <laughs> um, so that way we can use mechanical damage to again make them lighter so that we can do our job safely. That's a great question. I have a question. Sure. So, do the firefighters always carry this equipment on the trucks? This equipment lives on our mini rescue one at all one. And it also lives, we also have another set of equipment like this that lives on that command vehicle, that white looking fire truck that drives around. Um, and that, we also have all this equipment living on that truck. So we have it in two places. Um, and then if um, we've been told that we need some rope and it's a rope rescue call, we make sure all of this rope stuff. And this is only like so I just have one of our rope bags in this one kit called our hard kit. And in reality, our rope, our basic rope kit consists of 
a main line, a safety line, which is a whole other bag just like this one, or a hard pit, and what's called a soft pit. So it's pieces of soft components. So that's like the bare basics. And then we need our harnesses and helmets and, and our plastic stretcher. And there's lots and lots of stuff. And one of my favorite things to do in the fire department is rope rescue. So it's ropes are fun, ropes and knots. Awesome. Thank you very much, Chantel. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed that quick little video on mechanical advantage and how we gain by having it be lighter to pull, but we have to work harder by having to lift further. That's how mechanical advantage works. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your day. Okay. Bye. I thought of it.